Now this is a short video on uh, on uh, public goods and externalities. It's the second video in uh, on this topic we covered this week. Um, public goods have a greatest, I would say, greatest positive externality. Probably, most likely, it's the greatest public uh, uh, positive externality among the other among different types of goods. For example, provision of different types of goods. This is one reason why uh, you don't see a uh, free market participants, these uh, free uh, uh, private firms providing them, providing them because they are they are basically uh, non-rival or non-rivalrous, and then they are non-excludable as well. So that implies basically non-rivality of these goods implies basically that the benefiting from this goods or service doesn't really reduce the amount available to others. So your using of this service or the product doesn't really, really prevent others from using it as well. So street lighting is an example. Um, uh, gardens, for example, you see in the parks. So everyone benefits from it. My using these services doesn't exclude you from using it or prevent you from using it. In other words, they do not infringe this my using or my my ben my enjoying of these goods do not infringe on your uh, on your use as well so i am i am not uh, sort of uh, using it up and then you not having anything basically so it, it they, they are uh, well once using it doesn't exclude or prevent others enjoyment of this good so that's non rivalry of public goods other goods like think of your mobile phone. Once you buy it, it's yours. You exclude it. You know you prevent others from using it. Or the things that you consume on a daily basis, you buy your pack, tea pack, and things like this. Yeah, you 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 can easily exclude others or prevent others from using it by consuming it yourself. So it, does, it cannot be enjoyed by others. But when it comes to public services, it's not possible. They are they are available to everyone, virtually to everyone. Anyone can walk along the. Uh, along the London, London streets and then not pay for the survey service, the lighting service. But obviously, if you think, if you think of a uh, public service provider based on or using taxation, fine. Yeah, you, in, in a way, you're paying for them. Uh, but that's a way that the government is internalizing the externality problem here. But then think of tourists who come here on a, on a daily basis. They walk on over London Bridge, they walk along the streets at night, they never pay for it, even not, not taxation, so I'll come to that point, it's a, it's a free rider problem. So the rivalry, there is no rivalry here, yeah? so the government is not able to, or firms cannot easily exclude these people from using it, and also these first services are non rivalrous And now, non-excludability, excludability refers to a case where you cannot stop anyone from consuming the good, whatever the good is, yeah, you can't really prevent one. Uh, allow one to use and then prevent the other one not to use it. Yeah, think of this lighthouse uh, installed in uh, at the shores of uh, different, you know, uh, in countries where you have open seas, you know, borders are open seas basically. The, the lighthouse is usually built to guide the ships and as a result, anyone, could, any ship can use it without paying for it. So you can't really charge anyone of them. Because this lighthouse will be visible from miles and miles away, and that implies you can't really trace these people and then ships and then charge them for using this. And maybe they aren't using it. Maybe they are using it. Yet yeah, it's very difficult to track it. So that's non excludability of public goods. These two characteristics of public goods imply no one, no no free market participant. You know, when I say free market, it's a private firms, capitalists, do not provide this basically services. A very really good, qu uh, quick question now, uh, given the definitions that we made. Uh, which one of the following is an example of a public good? Look at this result, uh, results for uh, or the choices for about 10 seconds, please. You might now by now have decided that national defense, you can't really. Uh, call museums or mm, kind of say museums are public goods necessary because some museums charge for using the motorways, you have tolls, healthcare, you have NHS where we are paying national insurance contributions, yeah. And they could also be uh, uh, privately provided 
secondary education, for example, yeah, can be pro privately provided. But the national defense, once it's done, it's the budget is allocated. Well, everyone in within the border of this country is basically getting the same service as the one who's paying the tax, basically. So which one of the following goods has the greatest degree of rivalry? Now, rivalry, if you remember, is about being able to prevent others from consuming what you consumed. You know, once you consume it, there's no, no more left for the next person of that thing that you bought. So you can, you can easily see this now, yeah? It's a bottle of Coca-Cola or just soda drink. Okay, last bit, last one. From which of one of the following goods would it be the most difficult to exclude non-payers? I guess the answer is not very easy to find, so let's spend the next 10, uh, 10 seconds again. Right, so that's C, national defense. You can't really, as I mentioned earlier, exclude someone from using it. For example, tourists within a country, they, they enjoy the same level of national defense as the British population, for example. Yeah, they don't have to pay for it. If there is an external attack, British taxpayers pay for it. So it's difficult to exclude these people who are already inside the country. Now, as a summary, public goods have these two characteristics, non-rivalry and non-excludability. But then this last bit, non-excludability, creates this the free rider problem, the externality here. There are, well, free riders, usually those who do not pay for a service but then benefit from it by, by using it in some way. They do not report or they do not basically pay for it intentionally. Although if they do make donations for it, that's a good idea, but then free riding is basically a problem of externality here. Economists are trying to find a way of not allowing free riding problems, but not avoiding free riding problems, but that's very difficult. I can give you a quick example of a free riding problem that arose recently in my own experience. Uh, I went to a, a public farm in, in, in East London, and uh, when we entered the... Uh, the farm there was a donation box so farm doesn't charge anything it's public so anyone could enjoy any any sites of the animals and the uh, and the uh, the uh, area there it will be uh, what do you call this the um, there was a nice kind of canal in right in the middle of this thing so it's, it's, it was a very beautiful sightseeing basically site there I should say so I enjoyed it basically but then am I paying no but to avoid that free rider problem the park installed the donation box right at the entrance well that's the same thing as an exit as well so it asks you please donate voluntarily so because they cannot charge it's a public space they want to reduce that free rider problem by asking for voluntary donations I we made the donation, but then those who do not make donation basically obviously are free riding because our donations uh, definitely contribute towards maintaining the thing, the, the, the park for or the farm for the future generations, right? Because obviously the government is also reducing cutting the costs of these public services. But then with donations, we can keep it open. For example, if you go to a British Museum, the same problem here. A lot of free riders there. In fact, tourists never paid for British Museum there, right? So, but then there is a donations box on every floor, big ones with uh, the glasses. You can see the different notes, euros, coins from other countries. Yeah? So some, 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 some people do not free ride, some people do in this case. Yeah? It's very hard to avoid free ride the problem when you provide a public good. Okay, so these were examples of this thing. And the uh, free ride the problem creates this uh, something called uh, tragedy of the commons, which will I'll explain in the next video now. So that was a this was a short video on public goods and externalities that public goods create. See you in the video now. Next video.